Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Off-Centered Outdoors Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Dockstetter, along with my partner in crime, as always, the, uh, as usual, barefoot animal stuff and midget moron from Ojai. Chuck Testa himself. I'm going to leave off the other insults <laughs> I had while I was gone the other week. <laughs> it gets too long and I, I can't barely say my regular intro. Yeah, there's so, only so many things you can say. Right. So how you been this week? Uh, it's been a little tough week. I don't know. I got back from uh, last week and to the whirlwind mm -hmm. and uh, hadn't really, you know, like I said, processing Travis's loss is just going to take time. Yeah, absolutely. I was so distracted with, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. And then everything reminds me of him. For one thing, I don't know what he was doing, but he had... I can't even remember what we were taking apart, but every one, one was a star screw. Yeah. And one was a <laughs> regular one. And then I was doing something, and there's a regular one and a star one, and I'm like, damn you, Travis. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and just shit reminded you of them. You yeah, know? for and sure. I'm trying to make sense out of things that don't make sense. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. How about you? Yeah. You had the barbecue and yeah, we did a did a small barbecue on Saturday and we food trucked that at the car show and did okay. We're supposed to have another one this weekend, but it looks like we're gonna get rained out. So again, they're postponing that one. So who knows what we're gonna end up doing? I might actually get a weekend off. That would be nice, right? Well, it yeah. won't be a weekend off. I've got things I can go do. So oh my goodness, don't we all? I <laughs> just had a little bit of trouble starting to mount the run. You know what I mean? Yeah. But as you can see. I did manage to clear out, uh, well, it doesn't look like it, but... No, you got, got quite a few things out of here, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, I did, so that was good. Yeah, a few more to go. So, yeah, you're, more to you're, go. you're doing just fine. I got threatened about the, the Psycho Sika. <laughs> I can only say it Psycho Sika, otherwise... Psy, psy, never mind. <laughs> if I don't do it, I call it the other one. Uh-huh. But they want more of them and they want them exactly like that one so nice i hope it doesn't turn out to be a bear deal nah where they want their bear to look like richards but richards is 600 pounds and theirs was a labrador yeah you know no i think you'd be just fine so anyway that that made me happy yeah for sure you know, that was they, that they, was a cool mount I, I can't wait to do some more of those yeah well the thing is too the funny story was and i'm just going to tell him richard that you know he was talking to me about all the fancy mounts at the you know the sci and the, you know yeah the, the 10 deer in the tree with the flushing dog and all that you know yeah and i said well dude we could do you know oh, whatever yeah. just give us a picture mm -hmm. and we'll make it similar yep. the, i said the problem all it, all is it takes is money yeah that's that's the problem mm -hmm. i said you don't see it hanging here because unless i'm using you guys for an experiment it's uh <laughs> which i was you yeah know, because i wanted to yeah and uh let them see what we can and then give them something different mm -hmm. and expand the uh, horizon a little yeah and i'll bring you a picture of my black tail tree that way they can see that we've done something cool before yeah oh that's right yeah it's only three though it's not ten yeah but <laughs> <laughs> apparently these were like all like in the air on the branch you know like yeah. that's where they deer in his area of roosting trees well yeah you gotta they gotta go somewhere to get away from the corn feeders exactly <laughs> that's why they never see sasquatch they never look up exactly maybe that's why you don't see deer no more mm -hmm. maybe they're trying to you know exactly gotta look up you just, know just like the old joke you know you hide an elephant in a cherry field you paint his toenails red that's right <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> because, no, you you blow my mind when you say stuff like that because I'm always, you know, doing that conjective thinking, reasoning, or whatever, uh -huh. despite my appearance. And uh, <laughs> I'm going, wow, when, when Larry was hunting elephants, he was telling me, and other people have said this, that they're so big yeah. that they literally, you know, there they are, and you, you just, you're not, you know, yeah. they're almost invisible even though they're standing right there because they're so big <laughs> yeah you know uh-huh so that's where my mind went when you said that i don't know just put it there yeah <laughs> you know just <laughs> you won't see it 
you know, until it stomps you to death or something. Pretty simple, best form of camouflage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. But yeah, we're creeping up on, on show week. We're about what? What's today? The ninth? So it's like 16 yeah, days or like something? 15 days till I got to be there. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's yeah. coming in quick. I'm almost ready, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, uh, I saw some comment on Facebook trying to mount your stuff. We mounted ours months ago because yeah, we just don't have time. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, one of mine won't be ready probably till the August one now due yeah. to circumstances out of my control. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had that one window to make that mold, and then it. Yeah. Then we learned all about sulfur content in molds, which um, who knew? Yeah, exactly. But now we know. Yep, we do. But yeah, I got. I think a couple of them. A couple of them are done. So. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm but you're there. all set up. I mean, I'm, I'm coming in a little hot, so we'll see what you're happens. Coming in hot. Yeah. I might. I might be a little bit over over amorous, but. <laughs> That's you, what you Katie, Katie says that about you all the time. Boy, you have no idea. Over amorous. But yeah, you know, I figured the only you way. Throw your back out. I've <laughs> been there, done that. Sweat. The, the only Sorry, way, people. The only way I'm going to get 100 hours in on my mounts is if I do 12 mounts. So. That's, that's <laughs> it, man. You know, I don't know, man. You know. Uh-huh. Speaking of that, uh, we got a good guest today. Yeah. And uh, got several good ones lined up until we do our book report. Yep. Now, the problem is. Where did I put Joe's book? <laughs> That's a good question. It. Last time I saw it was on your desk, but that didn't mean anything. I know, but I'm pretty sure it's still there in the main slot that I had it, but I might have been smart. Yeah. Because Rudy claims that my mug shot of Joe, he saw it, so I have I have proof that I had it. Yeah. And he even read it, and then, yeah, your pal, Jailbird Joe. <laughs> and he said that I put it in the, in the second drawer over there on my desk. Yeah. I said, oh, no. Why? Because everything's different now. Yeah. But anyway, today we have Ron Anderson, and uh, he's coming to the show. And, yep. Uh, one one of, of the real OGs. Real OG, and for you guys that don't know, outstanding... Uh, upland guy or oh, bird guy all yeah. around and hell great taxidermist all around period yeah and then a great judge one of my you know yeah and yeah, just a all around hell of a guy yeah yeah and tough you know yeah he's he's been dealing with a few things so i'm really looking forward to talking to him today yeah so yeah we'll uh we'll get to him in just a few minutes yeah. but uh anyway yeah what, what else do we got going on chuck we we're uh you know, like i said we're gearing up for the show we I can't get, even believe it's already. I here. know. Yeah. We got a dinner to cook and two lunches and And then someone volunteered us for a seminar. Yeah, I don't know who that was. Moron. Yeah, we got three hours to do a twenty minute seminar. So Yeah. I know. <laughs> Reminds me of the day when they had the two day one and Mike they had Mike and they forgot. Yeah. So it's like eleven in the morning and he's done. Yeah. <laughs> now what? Uh huh. So yeah, we'll be doing a, a wild pig seminar mounting on one of my new uh, prototype mannequins. Yep. So that's exciting. We'll it also is be exciting. using one of my prototype noses and my prototype teeth. So Yep. It's a prototype. It's an all around <laughs> prototyping situation. Yeah, it's a it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Hopefully we don't scare everybody off. But uh Well we do that, but did you see the big uh Earliner thing about the expensive. Yeah, I, I still never read it, but yeah, I did see it. So I go, I'm gonna learn a lesson from Matt, and I'm not gonna jump in with both feet. <laughs> but I go, you can't hurt them more if you hit them with the two by four. Yeah, you know, with their name on it. Yeah, I mean, every, everybody's got their method of doing things, and some people are just now realizing that Bondo is now. 50, 50 or 60 bucks a almost gallon. Almost gallon. In fact, Mike and I were breaking down the ounces and stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. it's even lesser than we thought, you know. Yeah. For three liters is less than we thought, you know, and uh, which explains when you open the can, it's half empty. Yeah, it's like opening a bag of chips. But uh, charge you for half the thing of air. Well, and this is what, this is what I say. To, um, like I was telling you, like when I first, I was a Bondo guy and all that crap. Yeah. I got, well, I was an airliner guy, 
and I got conned into the Bondo at the circus, yeah. you know, and then uh, well, when Mike got a hold of me, it did take me a little bit to reverse. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. There's but there's no way it's faster to use Bondo than it no. with our system. The only way I could see it being faster is if you've been doing it for 50 years and you know exactly the steps, exactly what you got to do, exactly how much you got to have on your measuring plate and exactly how quick you got to get it you get it in the ear just like it'd be like us trying to switch to bondo and saying your liners take less time it's going to take less time for us to do liners than somebody learning how to do them it's oh gonna... no i i get it but what i would see here in my shop is uh it depending on the time of year yeah the catalysts will be slower or faster no or, exactly. you know what i mean and exactly all kinds of variants mm -hmm. and then there's also uh I just don't like it because of the, man, you can tell Bondo ear from, to the trained eye. Yeah, I mean, some people can do a real clean set of Bondo they ears, do. don't they get do. me wrong, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's I've seen, I mean, even Mike says he's seen a couple of guys do really nice feathered edge, and mm -hmm. at least at the show, but yeah. you wonder what they're every, you know. No, for sure. But yeah, I mean, so, to each their own. Yeah, um, yeah if you're going to learn, learn to do liners, get the good ones. But the one comment I said about them curling and pulling, that's true. Yeah. 100%. And the transition from the earbutt to the, mm -hmm. I don't, I just don't, you know. It, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. But eh, whatever, to each whatever. Own, like I said. Yeah. Well, there's all different ways to, uh, I mean, like always whatever works for you. Mm -hmm. We're here to be suggestive only. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and God knows I get lots of suggestions on my phone about what I can go do. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I enjoy those yeah. for some reason because <laughs> it all depends how you look at things. Yeah, you know? for sure. You know, if that's all you got. Dude, I survived Catholic school, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's nothing, man. Uh-huh. You know? I was in a biker, you know, you can't scare me. Yeah. I've been married twice, like that line on the movie. <laughs> yeah. I'll never break them. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, just like anything else, everybody's allowed their own opinion. Just don't force your opinion on somebody else, right? I mean. Well, it seems a lot of that's going on in that's the what I'm, world. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I mean, yeah. just yep. like anything else, you're, there's no, no room to be an asshole. I mean, we're all in this shit together. We, uh, again, we, we all need to be encouraging and supportive and lift each other up because, I mean, without that, we're all just going to be in battle and everybody's going to be against each other and this industry is going to die. Yeah, I just, it, it all boils down to, you know, again, what we do, we're lucky to do what we love. Yeah. But, and it's a skill and I'm not going to degrade what we do, but mm -hmm. look at who's doing it, man. If it was that hard... I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. You get what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Look, you know what I mean? We're not, we're, we're got a really unique craft and it's, and we're really fortunate. Mm -hmm. However, we're not like neurosurgeons. Yeah. You get what I'm trying, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to make a point. We're not brain surgeons mm -hmm. and we don't know it all. No, no. Nope. We'll never know it all. And, uh, and then that seems to be where some people seem to get a comfort level, mm -hmm. and then that's just where they stop. You know? Yeah. And that's why Joe is always pushing us to to strive for if you meet the goal. Like you got some some definite goals mm -hmm. which are really good, and then but when you meet those goals, then it's you got to take another turn and go. You know, well, God, you're doing so many. Oh, shit, I can't even keep up. Now I'm getting a headache. <laughs> Cause you got this goal, that goal, the other goal. Mm -hmm. Some people do them like one one major goal at a time, but you got like five right now. Uh, they say I've always been an overachiever. I don't know. Maybe I'm just dumb. I'm not sure. Well, that's what I was gonna admit. But yeah, I was said I was too stubborn to to give it up. Yeah, for real. I got it in my craw, and I was gonna learn it. And uh, and if I could only learn, you know. Mm -hmm book learning i could have been a doctor or something you know? <laughs> yeah but i couldn't stand it it'll happen i mean we do what we know right right and then we finish it as joe would say mm -hmm. do what you know well that's what we do when we run into something like the moose yeah we did what we know now we got to finish it because mm -hmm. that was a beyond a jackpot that yeah thing, yeah know? absolutely I'm, i'll be glad when that one's out of here yeah but 
I think we solved the, our main problem. Yep, I think so. Yeah. But it's still going to look like it does. Yeah, no, there's only so many things you can do, right? <laughs> well, you can't fix something that's broke by nature. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. So all they can do is, like you said, get the tines lined up how they... Mm -hmm. The brow and then... Uh, yeah, well, at least, they're, at least they're both even. They're not like... <laughs> well, that's what I want. Like the Adams family, I want it to rotate. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, yeah, we're wandering a little bit. No, that's okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I think we're probably probably ready. We can make our phone call if you'd like. I want to like to. I think I got it. Let me switch you over here. Look, I got it right here. Ooh, and we're ready and all, everything. Mm -hmm. Hang on, let me move this over here so we can both talk. Mm -hmm. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. We're nothing but consistent, consistently well, wrong. When we're a two-person show, yeah, we don't have a producer to stop the camera and restart the camera. Yeah. Those are come in handy, you know that? Yeah. I was watching Slash's new video. Mm-hmm. I'm making the song, and they actually had a guy that points for when the guy to come in here and there. Yeah. And I go, oh. <laughs> All yeah, right, well, let's give help. Mr. Ron a call. Ron a call right now. Here, do something with that. No, what did I do? Nothing. You're fine. Why is it not ringing? Hang on. Ron, you there? Are you there? There you are. I hear you now. We ah. we hear you now. We had a technical error on my part. Ah. I plugged the wire in upside down as is my custom. Well, there you go. Well, how you doing today, Mr. Ron Anderson? Oh, okay. The king of the capos. <laughs> what? Hanging in there. Good deal. We were just saying it's like 15 days till the show, man. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm working on my been working on my pieces all all week actually. Well, well that's good. cool. We're gonna be happy to see you. You know. Yeah, same here. So you feeling all right before we jump into this feet first? How you doing? Oh yeah, I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm uh. I'm a, I'm a little less than I was last year. My my lung function's down to 14 freaking percent. <laughs> wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. But uh, well, you're you're still good. Yeah, you sound good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as long as I'm sitting, I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's story of my life. Yeah. 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 Well, remember that guy. It's better to look good than to feel good. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we're on the premise of what we've been diving into the last few episodes is we're trying to get people's stories recorded, you know, what got them into taxidermy, what their journey was, like that, you know. How did you okay. get your start? So um, why don't you start with that, <laughs> if you don't Okay, mind. well, um, I, I started at uh, 11 years old, 1969. I was uh, I was really into birds as a kid, young kid, and I was drawing them and BB gunning them and you know <laughs> studying them and, and uh, I, I really wanted a mounted quail. I was really you know quail are my favorite birds of all time, and I mm -hmm. I just wanted a, a mounted one. And at the time, there was only one real known taxidermist in Reno, and that was the Chet and Wings Piazzo, the outdoorsmen, they were a famous uh, outdoor uh, you know, hunting uh, store, mm -hmm. and they had a little weekend show. And uh, but they wanted a hundred bucks in mm -hmm. 1969 for a, for a mounted quail, and you know, for for an 11 year old kid in 1969, it might as well have been a million. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Famous line then was first. I got to get a hundred dollars. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, friends of my folks, they bought me a uh, the Shooter's Bible Home Taxidermy Guide for my birthday. No kidding. Yeah, and it was it, when it came out. It was already antiquated techniques. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was showing to, to do a shoulder mount with a you know uh, accelerator, and then 
uh, clay over that and using a real skull and oh wow yeah two before frame and all that and so i i actually did deer like that wow and pounded out lead for the ear liners <laughs> <laughs> yeah was, some of my earlier work was pretty pretty sad but now we all you know start i somewhere. started into it and uh, mm-hmm. the, uh my first uh first mount of course was a quail mm-hmm. and uh, i used a plastic easter egg for the body <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and straightened out uh paper clips for the wires and couple of beads i borrowed from ma for the eyes Mm -hmm. it was yeah it was you know a joy to behold Mm -hmm. but uh that's how i started and and, uh you know i I, about a year into it i went uh found out there was another taxidermist in town and um had my uh mother bring me over to his shop one morning and i walked in now you know i'm like 11 years old and i walk into this guy's shop and said man as you know i told him, hey i'm you know i'm just starting taxidermy i'd like to you know ask you a few questions and he turned around waved his arm right up my nose darn near and told me to get the h out of his shop you're kidding me wow no and i oh okay <laughs> so wow I didn't talk to another taxidermist, not one, until 1995. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, and uh, I just started in on my own, and uh, I thought, well, those guys are (laughs) are some real a-holes. I don't Uh want anything to do with them. Uh And uh, so um, I, I just developed my own system. You know, which I still use today. And uh, I ran into a friend of mine about 95, and he was just starting into taxidermy. And he showed me some breakthroughs, and I hadn't even seen, you know, a a magazine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The the only two catalogs I had were Jonas Brothers and uh, the Northwestern. uh, Yeah, School of Soul. The Chieftain brand. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was my two catalogs I ordered from. And, uh, you know, I had started carving all my own mannequins and everything. And anyhow, so. But he said, oh, yeah, man, they got competition. You should go to a show. You do good work. And I go, they have them? <laughs> and he said, yeah. And so he gave me the number of the California show. Mm-hmm. And I, I called up. Uh, uh, Jim Silva uh, or somebody? Jim Silva. Yeah. yeah. And. uh you know, he, he gave me all the rundown and, and uh, you know, it was real friendly and everything. And I thought, well, shit, man, you know, maybe maybe I'll go and, you know, see what the deal is. And, and so I, I put together some birds and and uh, four mounts and took them in there and hit Redding and walked into that show. And as you remember, mm-hmm. back then, the show was huge. Right. Huge. I mean, there was, you know, probably 300 plus pieces in there. Wow. And most of them were birds. Mm-hmm. I just about turned around and walked out. I said, what am I doing here? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I was walking down aisles of all these fantastic water scenes. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just like, holy moly. <laughs> there was a whole new world opening up to me. You know, I was, I was in shock. Heck mm-hmm. yeah. And, uh, but I entered them and, and, uh, and I did pretty good, you know. I, mm. I got a best of category, and, <laughs> and uh, I was running up, runner up, best of show against Stephen. Wow! No way, really? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. The used to, I forgot he used to compete all the time back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, he come up after the uh, after the awards ceremony and introduced himself. Stephen did and said, mm-hmm. "You almost took my trophy." Mm-hmm. <laughs> Stefan's quite oh, a character, you know. He, yeah. he really is. He is a pleasure, yeah. you know. He's a funny guy too. Hell of a musician too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, you know, I started in, and and I had been doing, you know, a lot of uh, commercial work for friends and and stuff and part time and. And after that, I uh, I started doing work for uh, all the birds for animal artistry for my right, I, re- I remember that, yeah. And you uh, work for them, 
Yeah, well, I was just doing a part time still then. Mm-hmm. I was working at the highway department. Mm. Uh, and uh, so, you know, it, it got though to where I'd, I'd work. You know, especially in the winter, I'd work a 12-hour shift plowing snow. Mm -hmm. Then I'd come home and have to work another four to six hours mounting birds to, Mm -hmm. you know, get get Boyce's uh, targets done. And Mm -hmm. that was was burning me out. So so I had to go. Yeah. And I remember asking you about how it was at Boyce's when I was a young... Young, enthusiastic, you know, <laughs> dumbass, and uh, he told me it was uh, probably the easiest money you made at taxidermy. I don't know if you remember saying that or not, but I do, I do, because once I, you know, once I left the highway department and went to work for Boyce, um, mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was easy, really. I mean, you just showed up to work, you worked your eight hours, you went home, you had your weekends, your holidays. You know, I got good bonuses. He he really treated me well because I I, I filled a, a really needed niche in the shop. Right, which was uh, finish work. Their, mm-hmm. their finish work was really rough when I got there, and mm-hmm. and you know I I shit, within a month I was the, uh, the guy. Yeah, I was the finish department supervisor. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and so yeah, I you know anything that I needed. Any ideas that I had, I had a full, you know, full run to do. And uh, the supply guy, you know, anything I needed, I just told him. And and he didn't even ask questions. He just said, okay, how much do you want? And, uh, wow. Yeah, it was it was incredible. I was, you know, like I said, Mike, Mike treated me really good. And uh, I, I had no... Uh, no issues whatsoever, you know, doing anything I wanted. And it was really a, a huge time in my uh, uh, development, you know, as far as taxidermy and techniques. And, and well, yeah. I yeah, I had sat through many of your seminars at the shows and was loving your blue foam quail heads and everything, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yep. taking the legs out, I go, that. there you go. <laughs> Freaking yeah. genius. Why are we <laughs> screwing around with this, you know, in uh, less bug food, you know, in, uh, right? So. Well, yeah, that was, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't one of the anatomy guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I, 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 that was all the technique I came up with to get to the fun part mm-hmm. as quickly as easy as I could. Mm-hmm. You know, the fun part posing and grooming. Mm-hmm. All that other stuff was dirty and yucky and crappy. And, <laughs> right. You know. And you're I'm the first guy with your neck. I go, now there's another genius idea. If I want the head on the body, I'll just not put a neck in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. It, it, didn't, it didn't have anything to do with anatomy. And that, yeah. to be honest, I mean, there's guys like Pat Rummins who, who do the wireframe method with mm-hmm. Excelsior balls. Mm-hmm. You know, his mounts don't have anything to do with anatomy either. And in birds, you can get away with that because mm-hmm. of the fence. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not like a furred animal that shows the shows the uh, interior anatomy through the air pattern. Right, yeah. right. And, uh, yeah, you could have a beer can in there, and no one would know, really. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Not not that I ever did that, but <laughs> <laughs> but you could. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, well, I used to say that you could mount a musk ox on a thirty gallon barrel with some rebar rod and yeah, blade. Yeah, maybe so, huh? <laughs> and you wouldn't hardly know. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And uh, so then, let me ask you this question because you were the one judge that saved me from quitting competing in a way with the birds when you judged my pheasant that you uh, and you said you still remembered that but that seems to me like that was like in only 97 or something or 98 when did you judge the california show the first time um, um, i can't remember didn't mean <laughs> to stump you i'm sorry <laughs> yeah Chuck's always bringing the hard it, questions. I've judged it three or four times right. over the years. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah I, I can't remember, but it was it was back in there somewhere. Yeah. So you, you progress kind of quickly, you know, if your first show is like 95. 
Because I know it wasn't like in 2000, I don't think, when you when right. did well, that because of my own history with where I was at at the time. Yeah. I was in the, in the, between 95 and 99, something like that, you know? Right. Yeah, well, I, you know, I've been doing it for, you know, 25 years or so, and I started competing, and and uh, I, I had my award of excellence in a year mm -hmm. wow. from the NTA, you know? Three shows, <laughs> and I was... <laughs> well, you, I, you, I remember my, one of the stunningest pieces I saw was I think there was seven quail on a branch or something. Oh, the five quail. Five quail, okay. Well, yeah. you know, if you know me in math, you'll yeah. understand. <laughs> could be five, could be seven, could be... Yeah. Three, I don't know. And I remember every attitude was different. And my God, they just... I was just like... How, the, how do you do that? Yeah. Every coil I get in is like there's one leg, <laughs> one wing yeah. on the other side, you know, and it was only shot with one BB, of course. There's no yeah. skull, you know. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you know, as far as that goes, I've never had a perfect bird, you know. <laughs> Guys talk about, oh, I need to get a perfect bird for competition. I think, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, every every bird I've got right now that I'm working on for the show has replacement plumage on it somewhere. Wow. I mean, I it just I do that as a rule, and and uh, you know, because shit, there's the birds I get, you know, just like you, mm -hmm. look like they were chin gauged or <laughs> yeah. You know. I uh, even competed with road kills. Really? Wow! Wow! Oh yeah! 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 Well, I like to say my first birds look like frogs. And then as far as the anatomy goes, it's a good thing they had wires in them. Because if you clip the wires, they'd, you know, fall over backwards. Because, you know, the illusion when you don't know anatomy where the knee looks like you, that's not where it attaches, by the way. Yeah. I learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then Stefan told me, just look at a chicken next to, you know what I mean? Just go to oh, yeah. get a chicken. Got that. These guys have got all the simple ideas. And then I realized you learned it because you didn't know either. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Right? Yep. And that's how you learn to use a chicken for reference. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the birds in your areas look like chickens, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, it wasn't that easy way back when because, no. you know, we didn't have the computers and the, and the plethora of instant available reference. Yeah. Right. You know, you, you, you used the outdoor life or field and stream or, you know, little trim pictures from bird books. And that was it. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I, I, I talk to people these days about how fortunate they are to, mm -hmm. you know, the younger taxidermists to mm -hmm. have started when they did because, you know, they, they just don't realize. Um, yeah, they don't know whose shoulders they stand on. That's my yeah, standard yeah, yeah. Joe Kish quote, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Hence another reason for our episodes of as many as possible. Yeah. You know, before the history's gone and, the, and it's lost, you know. Yeah, and that's the struggles true. we had and, and, and everything, you know, and uh, it's true. Yeah, it's true. Right, Ron? You know, oh, and absolutely. I mean, I I went through, you know, three or four years before I did a bird that actually looked like a bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, what I'll take you like a hundred birds or something about what's that seemed to me like everything was like around a hundred things like, you know. Oh hey, God! I, I would started imagine. getting, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I would imagine easily, you know. Yeah, and I, I remember my first fish mount. Uh, my folks made me set it outside because it was reeking so bad. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know it had cheats in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. Important safety <laughs> tips like <laughs> that, right? You know? Yeah, even the flies left it for you know a while. It was just so bad. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, there you go. Yeah. Your first freeze-dried fish head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. And, uh, oh, my God. I just think, you know, and, and the struggles and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and and that, that Stefan can contort wire and make it look like it was nothing, you know. And, uh, 
And I look to my wire, they look like pretzels or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Some guys, yeah, like, I, you know. It's a different uh, different world now. And they're, they're definitely lucky to have, you know, all the, the sharing and everything, you know, that goes on now. Yeah, heck yeah. With information because, mm-hmm. you know, they, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought up Jim Silva because I'm going to look him up because he was a hell of – he was probably the best president. I mean, sorry, other guys, but <laughs> you know what I mean? That I think well, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah. talk to him all the time, actually. He he calls. We, oh, really? We so much. Yeah, oh. yeah. Is he, uh, yeah. Is he still doing it, or did he did he retire? Or? I don't think he's doing much taxidermy anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he still talks about it and – and uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get his contact info from me if you don't mind. I'm, I'm gonna get him on. You know, yeah, the more you I dive into this, the more I, I yeah start to re, you know remember all the OGs. You know, in this oh yeah yeah goes all the way back to '85 or something. The Pacific, you know what I mean? So well, yeah yeah you know. Well, Randy Huffman, he's gonna be at the show this year. Yep. No way! I forgot to tell you. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. Oh man. That's so he's, he's bringing a bird. He told me. And, no, really? And, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he, he's been. You know, he got into competing again, and last year, he, you know, he moved to Oklahoma, mm-hmm. and uh, so he's he's close to all those shows back there, and you know, he competed in Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri. That guy's a gem. We used to have some real gentlemen in that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. quality. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and while this this sucker sitting next to me, <laughs> I was absolutely done, you know, with all the headaches and all the 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 this and the that, you know. And then here I am. Yep. You know, yeah. back he got drug my ass back, and then yeah. you were there, and uh, and then uh, honestly, you're you're the reason Chuck came back. I told him, Ah, Ron's there, and he said. Well, son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's your fault I'm back, not Matt's, Ron. Thank you a lot. You know, no, Ron. I'll, I'll take that credit. Thank you. No, he goes, Ron. I go, oh, my God, Ron. Ron, if they could all judge like him on the, you know, find well, something positive, it. you know. and, and Yeah. I, I got so busy, you know, after I uh, left animal artistry, I, I went to work for Gary up in Elko. Uh-huh. Gary Powell, uh-huh. and then I came back down and, and spent a couple of years with Greg Cole, uh-huh. and uh, that's when I started competing again a little. Uh-huh. But then I left his shop and I opened my own, and I was so damn busy, I, I didn't have time to, to compete. You know, uh-huh. so I was away from the show for like eight or ten years, and uh, yeah, yeah, and that damn I, survival I, I, thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, it just, I didn't have the time, the will, or, you know, even to work my own piece of shit. I, well, who had time for that when you're when you're making a living? We always talk about that here on the show, but mm-hmm. there's a oh, big yeah. difference between a guys that actually live with that, you know what I mean, without some other job. And, yeah, absolutely. And the guys that, that have the luxury of, of being able to put that kind of time. I, I had yeah. to pay my mortgage. Yeah. I had to yeah. mount 30 things a month, you know what I mean, and finish them. No choice. Well, I was paying off a, a really bad deal with a, my ex fiance that oh, yeah, pretty there. much drained my life. And yeah, so, you know, had the habit of that, huh? Yeah. yeah, I was paying that off, and, you know, I had no time. And, uh, Oh my yeah. goodness! Well, biggest mistake I, of my life. I almost said something, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> the, the town you live in, other things are legal, and so if you only knew, you had invested your money somewhere else. So. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear you there. Trust me. <laughs> I guess God, decorum won't allow me to go any farther than that. But yeah. Yeah, I know. Right, that's it. But I don't know. It is, you know. We laugh because at our, at our, well, we laugh at ourselves because you have to. You have to. Oh shit! Yeah, it's either laugh or you're gonna blow your head off. Right, mm-hmm. right. I'd rather really laugh. Absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be able to laugh at yourself because, 
the seriousness is there's no reason for you know i mean and we're not not serious at the same time if that oh yeah yeah makes any sense mm -hmm. no, take, yeah. it makes perfect sense we take our work seriously we have a lot of pride in it but at the same time you know yeah. we're not we're not i'm not freaking leonardo da vinci or somebody you know what i mean yeah and hey if you want to be right you can be right that's fine with me <laughs> you yeah. know i don't even yeah, got the energy to argue no more so yeah you know no, and working for yourself in a shop man that's that's the hardest time you're gonna have mm, you know right i i was doing all those projects solo crocs and big bears and, mm -hmm. and shit and yeah, i was well, sorry, sorry for the oh you're okay yeah right we, we're we're rated for uh <laughs> okay um, we're on the internet nobody can hear us yeah fornication yeah. and all that is where yeah. matt made sure we got the all the checks or something okay yeah <laughs> but, uh, i tend to not have a filter so yeah 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 you know just the work was yeah, it started killing me with my discs and all that, and then luckily I got mapped, but I think back all the time, you know. I used to yeah. hold the, the, the 400 point bull up with one arm and screw the antlers with the, you know what I mean? And oh, how yeah, the yeah. hell did I do all that? <laughs> Six yeah. days oh, a week, too. you know, I mean. Me too, yeah. I, and then, Nowadays, I, I couldn't do that if I had to. No. You know? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm luckily if you don't, you know, I mean. You found yeah. that your birds are, you know, you can, bird guys are necessary, you know? I mean, they just are. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, you know? Yeah, now that I'm, I'm, I'm retired, you know, on, on disability and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got, you know, I just started doing birds again. And I don't know, three, three years ago, I thought, you know, I wanna, I'm going to go to the show again because mm -hmm. I heard they were moving it out of Sacramento back into Placerville. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I like Placerville. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I went and hardly anybody I recognized. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it's all the whole new crowd. There was, there, was a, yeah. there was a few, few of the old ones, but uh, mm -hmm. not many. And, you know, but you know, and the show was way smaller than I remembered. And mm -hmm. Of course, it was right at the COVID. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Times. And, yeah, that made it kind of rough. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, I don't think it's been like when we used to have it. You know what I mean? No, when probably, I was on the board, we'd have no I, be bigger you know, than I, Pennsylvania, even. You know? Oh well, yeah, I, I think the biggest mistake ever was leaving Reading. Mm -hmm. That 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 particular venue you know all the guys from down south tony finazzo and all they they, they gripped about having to go so far but yet they did it you know yeah i did every it year. you know me too and, uh, yeah yeah 10 yeah. hours or whatever from ohio yeah Nine, yeah you know, or two days the way i drive now but you know that's another story <laughs> yeah. it was just a nice venue you know mm -hmm. we have a bar there uh lake shasta yeah um, yeah, everything. And then, uh, God, I was telling Matt some of the stories when Leo would come and his Ferrari, you know what I mean? And the, the oh, yeah. time the hooker was in the hallway and all that stuff. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. They would probably not believe it, these youngsters, but it it got, I mean, that's t we could get down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we learned it from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, we, we had some hell of good times there in that mm -hmm. bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was kind of a hot little local bar. There yeah, it turned of, out there was a lot of uh, action there. Yeah, a lot of happenings. Right? You know? So, <laughs> yeah. Matt's looking at me laughing, you know. And, uh, I but can it's imagine. True. Yeah. You know? And that's another reason to get the stories, you know. And even about, oh, that's, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, no, I was, well, okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, you had, you had uh, stepped in a pile the other day. My no. wife showed me on the on the competition deal. And the, oh yeah. And that was my whole point. I kept telling Matt, I said it wasn't supposed to be like this, you know? And uh Uh oh. You're okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Um you know what I mean? And it wasn't supposed to be a hundred hours, right? And uh and then in original masters it was just first, second and third. 
not multiple ribbons, you know. Right. And all of that. And open really was the professional division. And now they put in like they're in the, you know what I mean? It's, 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 I don't know. It's all different. Well, that, that whole thread I posted, mm -hmm. there were so many guys that went off on other tangents that mm -hmm. yeah. what wasn't even part of my original topic. Point. You yeah. Know? But I got what you were putting out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's, just i was trying to remind them that there's there's integrity involved uh -huh. in, in in competing and and that you're not just you know shopping for trophies yeah uh -huh. exactly um, ribbon chasing we call it on the yeah track. yeah you know uh, you know it's, it's like if i always thought if you got a breakthrough award on a piece that piece is done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's done. And, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's... Well, how many it, pats on the back do you need? I'll go ahead and take the hit, you know? Seriously. Yeah, exactly. I mean... To, to feel good about your... You know, it's mm -hmm. sad a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But uh, it's... Uh, and if you... You know, I always thought that you always competed upward. Yeah. Right. You know, exactly. You, you, you yeah. take it to a state show. Then you take it to nationals, mm -hmm. then you take it to world, and then it's done, mm -hmm. you know. Um, right. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just a matter of, I don't know, I always thought that was common sense. But, yeah, no, you yeah. would think, but uh, sadly, that's that's a, a lacking quality anymore. Yeah, yeah. It, it's The younger crowd doesn't think that way or... or was just never. I don't think they were taught that way. Taught you know that way, I mean? right, right? Or led, I, I think led so by lot. example, you know, because uh, all the OGs are gone, you know, and uh, Joe won't come back out here, you know, and uh, of course they'd hate it if Joe judged, or you know what I mean, or because yeah. they get they get real critic, you know what I mean, but but right. constructive criticism. But you know he'll say, "Hey man, your your neck's missing two vertebrae, you know, or whatever." Oh yeah. I remember a guy arguing with him once at the. I'm gonna di digress. This is my custom. But the interesting thing is he had one piece in the open and one piece in the masters, right? So his piece in the open had got a blue, right? That the piece in the masters didn't get a blue, and. Uh, it was the same guy sculpted both mannequins and all that, and he, and uh, in the Masters he, he knocked them because the neck was broken, right? And then, um, but in the Open you can use any mannequin, mm -hmm. right? You see what I mean? You don't have to fix it, right? And the point Joel was saying was he says, "Well, are you saying so and so sculpted it?" Right? He says, "No, I'm saying the neck's broken." Yeah, you know, I don't really know who sculpted it or do I care, but. And he says, well, the point is, well, I got a free. He goes, yeah, because that's in the open. Yeah. Right? Now you're in the Masters. You're supposed to fix it. Okay? You're supposed to know that stuff. You see what yeah. I mean? And it's gotten all away from all of that, you know? And, uh, yep. Yep. And then, if you, and then if you give a guy a true critique, then he's taking off his coat to kick your ass or something, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I always just kept my mouth shut and tried to to take what I was... was uh, told and 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 work and look at myself you know and, yeah. you know what i mean you know judging is it's it's kind of a a double-edged sword mm -hmm. you know it's pleasurable to help people mm -hmm. but you always have those that really have some adverse reaction to Mm -hmm. to being judged and, mm -hmm. and your oh, yeah. critiques and stuff and you know you got to take that with the good and, and uh, yeah yeah but uh, but i thought the point was to get critique you know what i mean and, and uh, assumption yeah, that yeah. you're you're yeah you deserve a blue ribbon or something yeah you know and uh again maybe those guys are done like i said they get to a point and maybe that's where they're at i don't know yeah you know sure. yeah because if you yeah. if you close your mind to learning and then we are always punching each other in the arm in my shop and mm -hmm. Matt's shop because you get lax, you get this, you get burnout. You know what I mean? There's all kinds of you know oh, yeah. crap yeah. crap that get you down with this job. You know it's not easy. Yep. You know. 
Well, you know, I've I've been teaching a, a good friend of mine, Amber Dempster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been working with her for oh, you know, the last three years now, mm-hmm. and because uh, you know she 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 she's been doing taxidermy for years and had taken a deer class with me and a a bobcat class years ago and Mm -hmm. uh, a while back she was complaining about her birds and she said i I really want to get good at birds Mm -hmm. and i go well just start working with me Mm -hmm. and uh you know i uh, didn't charge her anything i said no that's not the idea i want you to work with me we're gonna we're gonna start mountain birds together we're gonna get you, you know. I, I just wanted somebody to pass everything I had on to. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. And uh, you know, it's a uh, that's been a great a great help to me because it's actually sharpened my game again. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. That's what the point of been back to the show too and all that. You know, yeah, there we go yeah. again. Yeah. Got you back you enthused, know, right? You know? You know what? When I went back to that first show back in, I guess, 2020, mm-hmm. um, after, I don't know, being gone since, well, the last time I was at the show was 2008 when I mm-hmm. judged. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't been to the show for like, you know, that long. Uh, and I still had the same kind of butterflies the same excitement you know the same oh i wonder what the judge is going to do with my bird <laughs> mm-hmm. sort of deal that i you know always had when i started and it was it was neat mm-hmm. you know yeah. I, I i enjoy that and uh and last year when i went with matt and did the i had actual fun which i'd forgot that you're allowed to have fun you know oh yeah yeah and uh, absolutely and seeing people and and the whole bit you know was just that's well, let's tell them matt that's what it used to you know mm-hmm. that's how we grew that's how you know you know what i mean that's just, yeah exactly you know exactly people. yeah that's that's what i uh that's what kept me coming back you know after that first show i was i was so pleasantly surprised yeah because i had been in the dark you know mm-hmm. of the whole industry basically because because of a bad experience as a youngster and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know i got to I had ptsd from that yeah, absolutely <laughs> you know yeah. and well, uh, <laughs> the the shows were kind of uh, a shit show for there for a little bit but uh, you came back right at the right time i think yeah i think so yeah. 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 I, uh, I, you know, I wasn't interested in going to Sacramento. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, when I found out they had moved the show to there, I thought, are you kidding me? You know? <laughs> well, you have different people that they get, they get a idea and you can't talk them out of it. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and it's hard to get board members cause it is a big jackpot once you get into that side of it you know Mm -hmm. oh yeah well and as far as that goes you know my judging i always tried to err on the lighter side Mm -hmm. if you would yeah Mm -hmm. you know i i tried to to build up people as much as i could well work with me sadly yeah (laughs) and uh i i just felt that better than you know we had those judges that uh Uh, you know handed out 88s like they were Tic Tacs. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I never did that. I, I wanted to, you know, if they were that close, I'd give them a 90. Mm-hmm. You right. Know? Yeah. Uh, two points. Come on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I'd, I'd work with them and, and write stuff on their on their score sheet and do little drawings and mm-hmm. do all I could to help them, you know, in the way I thought they needed. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's, how, that's how it should be. I wish more people had that in the frame. Yeah, and while Frazier even, believe it or not, he said they got to remember that the Open's not the Masters. Yeah. And not not saying to give a blue to every, you know what I mean, but don't be so stingy with the with the blue, you know what I mean. It's it's oh, yeah. like well, you said, and, if it's two points, come on, man. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What's that, a, 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 a nose thing or a... It's a you know what I mean. It's not exactly, exactly, and you know that's one critique I I gotta give against the newer judges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they really well. A they come in with their smartphones, and that's their entire 
way of judging. Yeah. Okay. They look at a bird. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see a quail. And so they, they flip through the pictures on the internet of quail. And if they can't see that exact pose, well, it's got to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, birds don't uh, don't march by a, a single drum. They can do just about anything they want, any position they want to Absolutely. pose, you know. And, and, and they really uh, don't stand still to pose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. And uh, Especially quail, you know. Yeah. And so, the you know, these younger judges, they're a little too harsh in my opinion Mm -hmm. and and uh it's like you know once they've gotten a big award or something they they don't feel like anybody else is 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 worthy yeah you know yeah and and and, and there's i've been told by (laughs) by higher authorities than me that's nothing worse than a guy with a new world title that becomes a judge the next you know what i mean and he's high uh-huh. on that that victory and uh and he judges to the world standard is the point yeah not that they're yeah. a bad person that's not what i'm trying what i'm god i'll get in trouble again <laughs> what i'm trying yeah. to say is in their mindset is that right but you're not at the world show yeah it's not right. a world and, piece. You know, it, it's uh Oregon or, you know, Idaho or some, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the real deal is, too, they could take that world winner piece to the next state show and get a low first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Know, by a different judge. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I've, you know, I've, I've had that experience, too, where I've gotten anything from a, from a best of show to a, uh, you know, to a second place, mm-hmm. and uh, it just that's it's the that's nature of the, the game, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to take the good with the bad, you know, mm-hmm. absolutely, and, uh, yeah. And, right. and uh, yeah, I always talk about reading reference and all that's all crazy to me, it makes me insane. You know, I had to learn how they worked on the inside out to to get what I yeah. mean, to know where yeah. Yeah. leg bones attached to the chin bone or whatever, you know. <laughs> right. Otherwise, they can't bend their neck or otherwise they can't breathe yeah. or otherwise they can't, you know what I mean, yeah. right? So that, you know. Well, I've had judges. I, I got a third place once in nationals mm-hmm. on a running prairie chicken. Mm-hmm. And the judge told me, it's drummed everywhere. And I just cracked up. I said, man, I don't mount just on a solid mannequin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, there, there's fiber fill under there mm-hmm. to give me shape and, and loft and, and all that. And right, go, right. That's how, how would you judge that. Pat Rummins? Yeah, yeah. 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 right. And uh, he, he kind of looked at me like, I said, you know, Pat Rummins, the wireframe, the balls of Excelsior underneath. Mm-hmm. You know, would you say his bird was drummed too? He's oral champion. And he just kind of looked at me with a puzzled white look. stare. Yeah. And that was it, you know. Yeah, I've stumped a few judges like that. They don't, mm-hmm. you know. They get that constipated look and can't. Yeah, get I get. It. I call it the Stassi look. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get that Stassi look where, and then they go right back to whatever. Okay, disregard that. It doesn't fit in the yeah. frame of science or something. So <laughs> why well, ask you a know, stupid, yeah. dumb question like that? Yeah. You know? You know, you can check for drumming on deer ears and maybe in the armpits, the obvious spots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But birds, there's no reason to feel. Why are you touching them anyway? You know, because the greasy ass fingers, man. Yeah, it's it's (laughs) what the feathers represent from the outside. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the shape is what you told me. The shape, the shape, the shape. See, I still remember 30 years later. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so I mean? Once in a while, it sinks in with some of these dim-witted guys like me. Yeah. You know, it's about yeah. the shape, Chuck. Absolutely, doesn't matter what you know. It's shaped like this, and uh, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, heavy man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I like the uh, you know the the 
the Pat Rummins and, and stuff. I I went to one of his seminars and watched him do that wireframe and the mm-hmm. ball to Excelsior. And I thought, well, that's kind of what I'm doing with my fiber fill. Right. You know. And, uh, and, uh, and you had your tweezers, and that's where I look like you go, this is how I make my leg, right? And you yeah. put it in and put them here, and we'll put some there, and a little here and there, and then poof. Now you got this poof. Yeah, little, yeah. It's little yeah. quail that looks real. Yeah. You know? So, and that's yeah. how you got the, you took the mystery of the arch of the back clean out of it for me. It's so simple, yeah. you know? Yeah. And uh, I had such a hard, God, it's isn't funny you remember stuff you had trouble with. It's interesting. You know, it oh, yeah. sticks in your your brain. Yeah, hell, I look at it. I have trouble with every day. Well, yeah, man. <laughs> like Matt and I, we like to say we bust our ass to be mediocre. So that's that's how we roll. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, we're all mediocre when it comes to trying to recreate nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, every bird I do, I like for about a day, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it sucks. Right. Well, I'm glad yeah. I'm not and alone, I, then. I can't stand it. It's like, yeah. oh, man, I see every little flaw. And, yeah, uh, and it never gets better, does it? You know, no. You, you, know, you can try again the next day, and you'll do a nice bird. And, and the day after that, yeah, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike always That's told me, board. too, don't, look, don't, don't beat yourself up. Well, we do anyway, but do better on the next one is what he always says. Just oh, yeah. do better yeah. next time. And then you do, yeah. and then you're all happy for about a week. and then Until you start finish work. Until you start to finish work, and then, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, some guys get that, that same thing from golf. Oh, yeah. We just we just do it with, you know, taxidermy. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, well, shit, this is what I wanted to do when I was 11 years old, and I'm you know, 65, so. Yeah, heck yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to do it since I was five or six, and same deal, you know. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that's what I wanted to do, but it turned out to be that's what I wanted to do. I just yeah. knew I couldn't figure out how they made them, you know, animals look like that, and how do you do it, <laughs> and you know what I mean. And yeah. Might as well have been freaking rocket science to me, you yep. know what oh, I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know. Well, the early 70s and all, I was... You know, like I said, I I was a little terror with my BB gun, and yep. and I I'd mount all everything I shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And that's you know, it was still pre seventy six, so it really wasn't against the federal laws yet. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was mounting, you know, sparrow hawks and flickers and finches and oh wow. And I threw them at this uh, gun show, mm-hmm. local gun show in in Carson every year. Hmm. I'd get a little table, and you know, I'd sell them for like you know. 15 20 bucks a piece wow <laughs> and, you know for a kid back then that was that was some major bucks oh, that was yeah. good money you know yeah yeah because uh, you remember gas and all that in the early 70s and uh, i had a yeah. friend of mine on you know from the day because another preference of the show is all self-made guy you know what i mean who ended up president of this or doing that you know what i mean and all right. of us were both voted most likely to end up in prison or whatever it was you know in our <laughs> high school class in my case you know what i mean and he was yeah. voted most likely to be a drug dealer and this and that you get what i mean and we were oh, yeah. all the, all the losers right and then somehow you know here we are you know so yeah all self-taught, all self-made, mm-hmm. and yep. all, all interesting stories, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think the cell phone is the death of everything to me now, you know, with the interaction with people and all of that. So. Oh, man, I call them phone zombies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and it is. It's, it's, <laughs> and I see it all the time. There'd be a, a group of people sitting around. Nobody interacting with each other. They all got their noses on the phones. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I'm looking, going, wow, you know, that's there's something really dastardly going on there. You know, it's a, yeah, and, and because when again, a, real quick about this because we're gonna wrap it up here in a couple of minutes, but um, we were forced at our ages 
run interact with other you know <laughs> you know what i mean like like oh, yeah. at school you got you talk to every you know what i mean mm -hmm. all the little different groups the the jocks and the eggheads yeah. and the you know yeah the bad boys or whatever you know and everybody knew everybody and uh, it was way different you know well you had to have some social skills yeah right and uh these kids nowadays, you know, you go through a drive-thru and uh, they hand you your whatever you got, and that's it. They don't say anything. Yeah. No, especially like, the you know, ones with the for... pink hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, you know, they, they, it, there's just no social skills anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, Ron, if you want to screw them up when they put the money in your hand, keep your hand out and look at them. <laughs> yeah and they won't know what like they won't know what to do because i was just talking to Frey yesterday about it i learned my first cash register was the old ncr with the push the thing and the little uh -huh. five cent you know what i mean yeah and you had to do multiple like if it's a dollar 25 you had to push three things and all that and you know what right. I mean. And, uh, and they'll put more money in your hand. Yeah, you know, because <laughs> they, you know, yeah. you can you can really stump them pretty easily. You know. Oh, I'm sure. Anyhow, I'm yeah, sure. It's, it's, but it's sad, really, is what it really is. You know. Yeah, it is. It is. It's uh, you know, and I suppose I don't know. Maybe that's what our parents were saying about us. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Way. Like. Like I developed my social skills by learning how to run really fast when I fucked up, you know. <laughs> yeah. With crowds of people chasing me because I, I had no filter either. Like, man, you know what I mean? And I go, oh, don't, don't say that, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Put that in the book for not to say to the yeah, football players or whatever. Important it was. safety tip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Safety tip. Well, yeah. Ron. It's been a pleasure having you on, yeah, and great one. really good episode, and we're looking forward to seeing you at the show. And For uh, sure. Can't wait to see you guys. Yeah, we'll see you. As down. always. Um, I know there's going to happen to know. I heard a rumor that there might be some good food. We'll see. For the I don't banquet, know. I don't know. The guy. Could yeah, the you know, I heard that rumor too. <laughs> yeah, well, I heard he's. A, yeah, like he said he's yeah, an asshole to work for. Yeah, you know. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason they keep me on the board, but I'll take it. I guess. But I, but I am been prospecting. I did one real barbecue with them, and I got a a hat and a shirt, <laughs> but no apron nice. yet. Yeah. I had and I could only do the bread. That was my job, cutting the bread. You know, so nice. you got to earn the top rock. Yeah, show. you do. You gotta you gotta prospect you know you can't just go right onto the meat line you know so well, that stuff's been top notch so far well thank you sir everything i've had that's yeah. awesome yeah. i love to hear that yeah well, all right ron thank you for taking the time i really appreciate absolutely. it absolutely thank know? you so well, much thank you guys it was, and it was i'll text you for silva's information because uh you know he can he can enlighten people on the the forming of the whole deal you know what i mean yeah you bet yep all right you bet. See you in 15 days. Okay, man. Have a good one. Right. Thank, you, Thank you so much again, Ron. Bye-bye. Yeah, you guys too. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, what a guy. Absolutely. 14% lung capacity, and he sounds great. Yeah, they don't make them too many more like that guy anymore. No, and then see, I got to, this is going to go like one to the next and, and help remember other people to yeah. have because forming the 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 deals and all that and uh um what was the other guy the other italian guy uh, not you oh god why can't marinara mar yeah, jim i call him marinara yep. i can do that because i'm italian too yeah, absolutely jim marinara what a character yeah hilarious you know yeah he's a he's a good guy too i haven't got to talk to him a whole bunch but the couple times i did he was definitely fun well and as the ron's reminding me see it, it it was competitive but it used to be fun too. yeah you know what i mean yeah it wasn't all about you know your score and 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 and, yeah, and absolutely. all of that you know i mean and uh clicks have a definite way of taking over things and putting the putting the shit in the shit sandwich they do, yeah, and that's why that's why I like it. Well, I don't want to get in the. A let say I heard <laughs> that if you're like in a motorcycle club mm -hmm. or any club, once you get past a certain number, yeah, then it starts break. You know, it just doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it needs to be eight guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or 
in 12 maybe you yeah know, and then other than that it starts to click up mm -hmm. and 100 uh, percent. that's what it is and then you, but the main thing is keeping an open mind mm -hmm. is uh again you know just as like there's egos in everything and uh no oh, hell yeah there is way egos but for just text, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just be grateful you don't have a real job. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. My customers will tell me, oh, I thought this is a real job. I go, well, it's a hard job. Yeah. And it's a job, but it's not a real job. It's a real job's what you got. Yeah. Having to get up and go into some hideous place with mm -hmm. people. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's all people -y out there. Yeah, people -y and and then they talk to you and then mm -hmm. or worse they tell you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, there's Jim's number right there. Oh, he sent it. He did. Oh man. Alright, Chucky. Will you better go to work for the day? I think you got a washing machine guy out there banging away on your dryer. So Oh I do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, then I'm ready, and uh, hopefully I'll put a, <laughs> put together a dip. But like I said, I got in a little funk, but that'll happen when you lose a nephew, I guess. Absolutely. You'd be weird if you weren't messed up a little bit. Thank you, man, because I get hard on This guy will tell you how hard I am on yeah. making myself work, and you know, I got too good at it. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know how to not do it, you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm learning balance. Oh, yeah. Even at my age. You have to. Yeah. Well, all right, Matt, we'll talk us out of here. This is another fantastic episode. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for tuning in again to another episode of Off-Centered Outdoors Podcast. Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and, of course, YouTube. And uh, check us out on social media at Butcher Shop Taxidermy, at Ojai underscore Valley underscore Taxidermy. And uh, yeah, and then we'll be taking a show on the road in two weeks. Allegedly, hopefully we'll have time to. God, I hope you know. I really there. hope we do, and, and uh, have some. You know, we just got to make a time to sit down for one hour. No, I don't know how when you're prepping for the. The we're gonna know. be a little bit busy, but I think we'll be right. able to get get at least one down. Or we should record our seminar. How about that? Yeah, we might have to have somebody run the camera, but I'm sure we can do the that. The one who's not going to be there because he's got pneumonia or <laughs> he's got or, the Hershey squirts or, or whatever or, he's doing. Or, uh, well, mostly he's rectal cranial inverted. That does happen. So, anyway. All we right, have guys. A, all right. Thanks anyway, a lot. Thank you so much, and we'll, we'll catch see you on the next one next week. Be good.